something that is so, so true. So it's the imagination and creativity, the asking why. I would tell you that anytime you get a chance to, I apologize, parents and teachers, anytime, anytime you get a chance to break something and understand why it works and how it works, I would encourage you to do that because it's the best way to learn is through that hands-on demonstration and the hands-on exploration. So go and, uh, and, and make a mess. And uh, your parents will help clean it up, I promise you. <laughs> On, on, a, on a note of resilient cities, one of the, it's to Susan's point, I, I lived in Houston at the time of the Harvey hurricane as well, and I actually got to see the destruction that the flooding caused in Houston. Uh, we were in Alabama at the time of Katrina, so we weren't as directly impacted by Katrina. But in Houston, one of the things that actually struck me, even though lots of the city lost power, not all of the city lost power, even though the the communications and the cell phone service was lost in parts. It was not lost across the city. And what this actually allowed to happen, and this is the first time I had seen it in person, was private citizens were able to coordinate the rescue of their neighbors and their family, and even strangers, because they had access to connectivity. So when we think about resiliency and the, the powers, the connectivity and the power that you're creating through your projects, that very, has a very real implication in terms of how you rescue those that are impacted by the devastating floods. And to the extent that people were actually building applications to coordinate where do you deliver food, where can I donate blood, where can I donate food, where can I get shelter, what shelters are available and have, have availability. And it allowed the private citizens to come up from the parts of New Orleans and actually rescue thousands of people because they had power and connectivity in large parts of Houston. So this is the first time where I got a chance to see the, the direct impact and benefit of having resilient cities. Now granted, there's a lot more that we can do, and there's a lot more that you all are doing that can make this even more impactful, but it is a very real benefit when we look at having power and connectivity despite the natural disasters. You ever recognize any of these up on the slide? Anybody experiment or ex explore with any of these devices, whether it be drones, drones, see hands for drones, 3D printers, exoskeletons, all of those, virtual reality. Anybody play a game of virtual reality? Yeah, lots of hands. So actually, Dan, Dan had Fortnite in his uh, in, in his uh, in his slide deck. Actually, I'm kind of curious, who's playing Apex Legends now? So, so yeah, so both oh, Fortnite, Apex Legends, it's, it's amazing how fast things move and change. You have to do your slide deck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm not joking. I mean, Apex Legends is legit. Am I not correct? Am I right? Yeah. But all of these, all of these that you're experimenting with and exploring, they could very well be what you do. What they could could very well lead to what you do in your job in the future. So understanding the technology, using it to solve problems, using it to make the world better, that could very well be your job. The jobs that we have today are not the jobs that you will work in the future. Your jobs will leverage technology and innovation much more fluidly than we get a chance to leverage. So continue to explore and experiment. Some of the things that we're working with today in the field include the drones, include smart concrete, include 3D printing in the field, the construction of the future is becoming much, much more high-tech than it has ever been, and it will continue to do so. So the lines between personal interests and professional jobs is blurring more and more so. So continue to explore and experiment. And don't let your parents tell you that comics aren't relevant in the business world. They're actually still pretty powerful to communicate messages. So I saw the superheroes. Embrace, embrace the superheroes, embrace, I think Susan mentioned the nerd, embrace the nerd, embrace any way you can find to communicate a message. And if you're curious and actually have a smartphone and grab the QR code there, if you actually have a smartphone on you, that will take you to a virtual tour of our Welding and Applied Technology Center. So if you're curious about what does a physical welding center look like, what do you do in a test lab, what happens in a welding booth, all of those types of things, you can grab that QR code and after this, go through a virtual tour. We can provide the link as well if you're curious. There's just a sense of how we're using technology to make the world smaller and to impact those around us in a very positive manner. So, I really have to say thank you for letting me be here. Congratulations to all the finalists. Best of luck. 
I'm excited to see what you do not only here in this session, but what you do in the future as you engineer the new world. Thank you.